Please welcome DeRay McKesson, civil rights activist and host of Pod Save the People. Police officer Jason Stockley yelled, I'm going to kill this mother effer before he shot Anthony Lamar Smith five times. His lawyer described this statement as a mere moment of human emotion in a dangerous context. The judge in this case, as he acquitted Officer Stockley, said that in his 30 years on the bench, that he had not come across an urban drug dealer who did not carry a gun. And as you can imagine, people are in the street right now in St. Louis, they've been in the street because we know that Anthony should be alive today. And I start with this because people are upset about the way that people have been enraged. People have complained about property damage, they have been upset about stop traffic, they have been inconvenienced by the protests. But there's this question of how are we supposed to respond to murder? What are we supposed to do when we see the people that we love, the people that we've grown up with, the people that we care for, and the people that we serve, when we see their bodies on the ground, like Mike Brown for four and a half hours, what are we supposed to do? How am I supposed to respond to murder? It is in that context that I think about what 2030 might look like, what freedom might look like, and what the work of resistance looks like. People often forget that in Ferguson, in St. Louis in 2014, that in August, September, and October, it was illegal to stand still, that if we stood still for more than five seconds, we were immediately arrested, that people looked back and they saw us on TV, they saw us marching and thought that marching was something that we did in solidarity with the civil rights movement, but the reality was, was that we marched because we had to. And we eventually took them to court and we eventually won that moment, but I'm reminded that was not too long ago. That protest we know is not the answer, but pro protest creates space for the answer in so many ways. Now when I think about, I offer four sort of big thoughts about how we get to 2030. And I've titled this talk on the other side of freedom. But before I talk about the other side of freedom, I'll talk about this side of freedom. And on this side of freedom, there are 19 cities in the country where you're more likely to be killed by a police officer than by a private citizen. On this side of freedom, the three biggest mental health facilities in this country are jails. And on this side of freedom, you can lose your right to vote permanently in the state of Virginia for theft over $200. So we have a lot of work to do. Now, before I go into these four buckets, I'll say two things. One is I'm mindful that we aren't born woke, but something wakes us up. And for so many people, it was a tweet or a Facebook post or an Instagram post that got them to understand that the world wasn't the place that they thought it could be. Yet. The second thing is I'll remind you that I taught sixth grade math and sixth grade is the best grade. Seventh grade is puberty and deodorant and it is tough. <laughs> but sixth grade is still magic and joy. And in teaching, I taught sixth grade math and math is, you know, special for people. But sixth grade is like just still a beautiful moment for kids. And I say that because I'll never forget one day my students, I taught 90 and 120 minute classes, which is a long period of time for 11 year olds. And one day they wanted to go to gym early. And the gym teacher is a good friend, my best friend in the world. And I was like, Donnie, will you take, will you take my class early? So he takes them. And all of a sudden they come back early. And I'm like, why y'all back? I thought y'all wanted to go to gym. And what I realized in that moment is that they were more in love with the idea of gym than the work of gym. <laughs> and I say that because in moments like this, I'm reminded that people are more in love with the idea of resistance than the work of resistance. So as I offer these four thoughts, I'll ask you to think about how in love with the work of resistance are you? The first is this question of what is freedom? I think about freedom as not only the absence of oppression, but the presence of justice and joy. And so much of the work that we do focuses on the absence of oppression. But the reality is we will need to be as thoughtful about taking down all the bad things as we are about building up the beautiful future that we want. And when we hear an American president say things like make America great again, that, that that ask is about memory and recall. We've lived in a world where white people have controlled everything before. So bringing that world back in full force is not something that takes deep imagination. We've seen that before. We've been there. But a world of equity and joy is a world that we've not yet lived in. It's not a world that we know what it feels like and what it tastes like and what it looks like. And that requires us to imagine. And if you can't imagine it, you can't fight for it. 
Think about how many rooms you sit in that just talk about what the problems are, how hard the world is. Is that I challenge all of you to flip those rooms to think about what the world could be and to imagine how to bring those into fruition. That one of the things that oppression does, it's so insidious, it, it is that it kills our ability to imagine. We forget what it means to dream, that we take this world as it is and we believe that it's always been this way, but we know that that is not true when we think about the work of resistance. Now with protest, I've already said that protest is not the answer, that protest creates space for the answer, but I will ask, what does it mean to live in a world where standing in the middle of the street is the only way that you feel like you can be heard? And by 2030, I'm hopefully we will be in a place where we've reimagined power so people don't have to be in the middle of the street to be heard. People don't have to shut down malls and highways and close schools as a way of being heard. That we think about power as the ability to influence decision making and we think about politics as a decision making process. And people should have power. People are born with power. That when people ask me, how do we empower a new generation? I remind them that I cannot give anyone power. I am not God. That when we think about the work of empowerment at its best, it is about helping people will find the power that they already have, that people are born with power, that what we can do is help them unlock that. Now, when we think about social media, social media has completely flattened the landscape of what it means to be in the world, that I think about its ability to help us fight against erasure, that erasure often manifests in two ways. One is that either the story is never told or is told by everybody but us. And in this moment, we became the unerased. We became the people able to tell our own stories in real time every single day. We flattened what the world looked like in terms of who became storytellers. And I think that's really powerful. I will say by 2030, I think that the most powerful people will not be the content creators, especially in a world where everybody's a content creator, but that the most important people will be the curators, the people telling us what to look like, what to look at, how to look at it, and what that means, how to feel about the world, that a world where everybody can create content, that that won't be the most magical thing that people can do anymore, but the curators will be the new power brokers. And the fourth thing I'll say is that we can do this. That when I think about what keeps me hopeful every single day is that I see people all across the country who are more committed to fighting than anything else, that are more committed to bringing in a world that is just and beautiful, and that keeps me hopeful. I think about hope as a belief that our tomorrows can be better than our todays, and I believe that. So I'll leave you with this reminder that I will see you in 2030. Thank you. <laughs>